it's easy to get dramatic about where we stand in regard to the environment, but it's not inappropriate. We're rerouting rivers, we're destroying ecosystems, we're wiping out species. These really are life or death issues. These aren't just ideological things, they're just logical. If we don't change our behavior, the future is going to be quite difficult. The only thing that will make a difference is implementation of different ways of doing things. The education sector, the school sector, is, is I think the most important area to focus thoughts and efforts and funding regarding sustainability because it's, it's multifaceted in the way that nothing else is. But if you're in the public sector and you're dealing with public money, then you have a responsibility to do things wisely. And if we can make the case that you can do the things that we are setting out to do and still have a thriving economy, then that could change the world, really. The Green California Schools and Community Colleges Summit is really a unique event. It's for the people who are responsible for facility programs or grounds programs or curriculum programs to help them understand what other people are doing that's working. I've been on the advisory board for the um, summit for the last six years and it's opened up a lot of things that I never um, would have encountered before. Clean energy, solar energy, uh, stormwater management, electric vehicles, and it's really um, broadened the offerings that I can uh, transmit out to my school districts. Public schools own a great amount of real estate in the state of California. Just in LA Unified, where we have over a thousand schools spread out between uh, around 715 miles of territory. From that perspective, there's a lot of land area, land service area that we manage, and it's this type of topic and subject matter that is really uh, prevalent here in the Green Schools Conference. I'm the executive director of a nonprofit, Green Schoolyards America, uh, looking to help school grounds convert their asphalt schoolyards into parks, places that are healthier and more comfortable for kids to be. Uh, we have an energy management platform that measures uh, energy, water, and gas. You can see what's going on when the microwave goes on, the coffee maker. It really lights up everyone's uh, imagination. And why are we attending a Green Schools Conference? Because some studies have been done where they looked at 160 classrooms in California and only about 50% of them were getting proper ventilation. And they correlated the lack of ventilation with increased illnesses. And so they even did an economic analysis of this and found out it would pay schools to provide better ventilation and they would get more money from the state because they'd have more students attending every day. So what we do is that we can save about 70% of the HVAC energy over a course of a year. You know, this is a unique opportunity for us as a business that we can make a profit, we can actually save our customers money, and we can save the environment as well. Every year we do hear stories from people who came to the conference and then went away with something that really helped them. One of our advisory board members is, is uh, Dr. Tony Knight, who's the superintendent of Oak Park, he frequently um, finds things in the expo that he is able to use in his district. We were the first school district in the United States to install classrooms that are made out of shipping containers. So with all the global trade that's going on, these cargo containers are being produced mostly in China. And because of China's situation where they export so much, they tend to go away and never really come back. So this company located in Los Angeles called Vance Modular System, they came up with an interesting design with floor to ceiling glass windows and by putting three of these cargo containers together, um, you make a single classroom that's 960 square feet, which is a typical classroom in California for about 30, 30 to 40 students. That's just one example with buildings, with our solar power. You know, the district invested $0.8 million of school bond money to outfit all the campuses with solar arrays. Because of their thoughtful and aggressive efforts regarding the environment, they've attained a position in the community that I think any district would want. And eventually the community started saying to the city, we want you to manage your lands the way the school district is. There is a sort of a prevailing um, attitude that green in 
construction, technology, practices, recycling, purchasing is more expensive. And I've come to find that's just simply not true. It depends on uh, longer, maybe life cycles um, to get your return on investment. But once you achieve that, it's saving you tons of money into the future. Because of the cost of electricity rising, it's saving us a lot of money. And we've had a particularly sunny year, so we got a bonus check just this summer from at Southern California Edison for $50,000 because we produced more than we even used. One thing I would say to people who are on the fence is I hope they would come to our conference because they can meet people who can help them understand where the ROI is and help them make the case to their board that an investment in electric buses, an investment in a more efficient HVAC system, an investment in solar energy will pay off. Another area of great importance for a school district is related to education, how you're educating students about the environment and, and how their impact is on it. Whether it be recycling, not uh, letting any food scraps go to waste, having gardens, having animals, um, chickens and so forth on campus, they're taking these things they've learned and they're bringing it home and making them part of their family uh, practice. So they're kind of teaching up to their parents and it's, and it's such a, um, a natural uh, learning for them, I think it's, it's going to really take hold, it, you know, like technology. They don't think about it, they just are, and that's the way this will become. There's no other sector that, that really has that same potential to impact the future. The kids are coming out of there with a whole new um, perspective of career possibilities. Um, they're going to college for majors that I never envisioned and they are already leaders in their, um, in their peer group and they're going to become even better leaders. Every time we do this conference, I'm reminded uh, what a vital, vital part of any kind of happy future <laughs> the schools are. If you look at the scenarios that have been uh, envisioned for the next half century even, I now have a daughter who's 19, so within her lifetime, uh, some of the scenarios regarding where we could be are pretty dire. I sense that the younger generation has taken on this um, challenge, but I think it's going to be up to my generation to help them execute it. So we can't just keep missing the opportunity to bring people into the future that is really there for them and play a role in all these changes that need to happen if we want to survive.